All right, good evening, guys. Uh, I'll be talking about building websites with Google. Uh, a little bit about me. My name is Yao. I'm a programmer at HipCloud. I'm here with a couple of my colleagues. Uh, that's my email, my Twitter, and my GitHub, where you can put and stuff like this. And this is the new month of HipCloud. There's just eight of us from different countries, uh, all eight. You see some of them around, so say hi to them. All right, so uh, Google. If you visit the website of Google, uh, it's claimed that it is the fastest framework for building websites, and that is a bold claim, considering that it's, it's just a new entrant. There's been Meloman and, and a couple of others in the business already. Uh, so what does it mean when it says it's the fastest? Uh, here's a couple of numbers to impress you, that uh, Google's main job is really around compilation, and it usually compiles every page in less than a millisecond. Uh, if you build your own website, the, the, the Google command line to provide an option called benchmark that will show you the statistics of uh, how, it took, how long it took Google to prepare your site for deployment. And very recently, Smashing Magazine, they moved from WordPress to Google and a bunch of stuff that Netflix, uh, Netlify did for them. And according to, according to the, the data that was posted by Netlify, uh, it took Google about 30 seconds to build 7,500 pages. Uh, existing pages. That's that's pretty impressive. If if you're a big website, uh, the size of Smashing Magazine, and you constantly need to uh, publish new things, 30 seconds is some 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 good value. Uh, and the content that Google produces is always static, which means that there is is already pre prepared. You don't have to fetch anything from any API. So very crushable. So you can put them on CDNs, and that's what Smashing Magazine does now. They distribute their content on CDN because it rarely changes. And it gives them a lot of benefits. They have they have an article out there about it, uh, how, how their move is, is affecting their engagement. You can check it out if you want to. All right, now that that is out of the way, uh, Google is basically a tool, and it's it's built with Golang, but you don't need Golang on your system to use it. There is binaries in most of the popular operating systems, and they use the latest uh, package installers, like Brew for the Mac, Choco for Windows. It's not for Linux. But if, if you have Go in your system and you want to build the latest for yourself, that is a command. But you have to have Go in your system. And that's all you need, nothing else. So if you want to build websites with Google, just install Google. No NPM, no Python, nothing else. All you need is there for you. And the key features of Google that I want to talk about is the power of the command line tool that comes with it, uh, how it organizes contents, plugins and add-ons, and how easy it is to deploy your website after you're done. So the Google command line is basically all you need. It does everything from generating and maintaining all the content. If you want to create a new website, you use the Google new command. If you want to create new content, uh, you, use, you use the same Google new uh, command. Uh, Google provides hot reloading, live reload for you when, when you're building your website, and that command is Google server. And it's so quick that if you don't put your editor and your browser side by side, you'll never see that the reload happened, but it really did. It's super fast. It is that fast. <laughs> you should check it out. Uh, and it provides, it provides another command to import your website from, or your static website from other options like Jekyll to Google. Uh, currently, it's only Jekyll that is supported out of, out of the box, nothing else. The, the rest is uh, provided by community. But, uh, Jekyll itself can import 26 other formats. And so if you if you mind using Jekyll as an intermediate representation, you can go from WordPress to Jekyll to Google, or from Contentful to Jekyll to Google. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish Google had a Google deploy, but uh, that is not available yet, and so you have to manage the deployment yourself. But maybe in the future we're gonna have this command Google deploy where you just configure a bunch of things and then your website will be up on Netlify or AWS S3 or GitLab or GitHub, wherever you want to put it. How does Google organize the content? Uh, it's late in the market and so it's studying what others have done, which is use Markdown for writing content. Uh, that's by default, but there's community plugins for if you want to write with ASCII doc, if you want to write uh, restructured text, if you want to write Pandoc, many other formats that you want to build for yourself, it's also there. Uh, and it allows you to incorporate data using the data directory, that's where your data goes. And it uses the, 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 the Golang uh, template syntax, which is very much similar to handlebars or HTML bars or what, what, you're, what you're pretty much used to the JavaScript ecosystem. 
I said that there are some nuances, but it's over there. Uh, the other thing about Google is it groups your content so that even though you have a static website, a blog is different than a tutorial and it's different than a post. And when it comes to grouping those content, you call them archetypes and you can define how a blog is supposed to be rendered, how a post is supposed to be rendered, how a tutorial is supposed to be rendered. Uh, you, you do that just once. And when you do that just once, anytime you want to create a new content, you, you go Google new blog and then, and, then, and then it creates the blog using the style that you defined. If it's a tutorial, you go Google new tutorial, and then you define, you give it the, the name of the file and Google would apply the style to it so that uh, you're not mixing everything together as one, but you're able to target the different contents and how you want them to appear. Uh, the URL is basically the, the part of the post. And so if you see any Google website, the URL shows you the file structure. If you see slash tutorial slash mbar slash something, then the folder is uh, arranged in the same way. So it's very easy to go from URL to post, post to URL. Uh, and we have pretty URLs, which is not compulsory, but that's the default. If you don't want it, you can you can pass dash dash ugly URL, and you're going to get .html at the end of your file name instead of the slash. Uh, there, is, there is plugins and other ones, mostly provided by uh, several people. Netlify is a very good one. Uh, which is what Smasher Magazine used to study their stuff. Uh, there is migration tools that is built by the community for WordPress, for Ghost, for Tumblr, for Contentful. I don't know how long it would take for these things to become part of the official tool, but if you check uh, staticgen.org, which ranks static site generators, the only, the only tool up in front of Google is Jekyll, and so Google intentionally targets Jekyll, as in the person you want to overtake. Uh, accelerated mobile pages is by default, Slightly because uh, some of the core developers work at Google, and so uh, it's, it's one of the things that they want. But if you want to have comments on the website, if you want to have forms on the website, you know the thing about static web, static uh, websites is you usually, you usually don't have a backend, and when you don't have a backend, uh, where do your forms go? Where is my comment going to go? Uh, it has easy integrations for things like discuss. Uh, also forms, you can use uh, some of the plugins that are provided by Netlify or any, any, any one of those things that you find out there uh, to, to, build your, to build your website so that you can take comments and then you can have people submit uh, feedback or whatever it is that they want you. Uh, how do you deploy a website? Basically, you run the command go, uh, Google, and it generates a public uh, folder in your site. And that's how Google's job is done. Uh, that public folder that it generates is what contains your entire website. And so you carry it and you take it wherever you want. So you don't have to run Google anywhere. Uh, it has no dependencies, it has nothing else. It generates a public uh, folder for you. And then if you want to host it on Netlify, if you want to host it on GitHub, if you want to host it on GitLab, if you want to host it anywhere, it's just raw HTML files with your own CSS, nothing fancy. You don't need to install anything, no dependencies, nothing of that sort, and, and you're good to go. Uh, who is using Go? Currently, the biggest use of Go of, of Google is Smashing Magazine, and, and, and it's a big deal. Uh, there's a couple of other sites that are using it, but uh, hopefully this site, this place is going to be filled with some of you guys over here who would, who would find it impressive enough to, to use it. So it's empty because it has to be filled by you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty simple and surprising to you. All right, thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer it. Uh, can you show an example? So of something, so okay, okay, yeah. what's inside basically inside of the okay, data. so so you remember I showed you over here that we have a Google benchmark that benchmarks Google, uh, it doesn't compare it to anything else, but in that benchmark, there's sample websites that can be built with Google, and I have it on my machine so I could I could run it for you to see uh, how it works. Or oh, you want me to go through the process of creating a new site or something like that sort? We still have time, so if you want. <laughs> All right, no pressure. <laughs>
the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm scared to build a new site is it's going to be a hazard. Well, examples now also don't also find. Yeah, so let me let me let me pull the example instead. So give me a second. All right, uh, anybody who's familiar with Go knows how Go import works. Um, I mean, I'm in a Go folder right now. And these are, these are some of the sites that we have in there. So if, for example, uh, wait, it looks like the whole thing is not showing, but that's fine. So this is this is this is stuff you get when you generate a new Google website. It gives you the layout uh, minus the themes because you you probably could download some theme online. There is a lot of themes online. If you go to themes.go, Google.io, free themes that you can download to, to start building your stuff, whether it's blog or whatever, uh, they're available for you to use. I think I could show you that. Give me a second. Are you gonna keep doing that? So uh, so these are these are things that are freely available to use. Uh you don't have to pay anybody any money. Uh whatever you want. It depends on the, on your type, maybe if, if it's a blog or whatever you want, you can, you can find them over there. Downloading them to use is just as easy as get clone in the repository into your own uh, uh, Google website and then you have it to go. There's a lot of them, so you choose. Then you can customize a little bit with your CSS. But this is, this is basically the structure of a Google website. And I'm going to run the Google server, which is, which is a local, uh, local dev. And see how quickly it built 136 pages uh, with nine uh, paginations, 583 files. It's very, very quick and it's done. I can repeat for you just so you see how it happened. That is it. And when that is done, you have the site available at ho localhost 1313. But, but as I said, Google's job is not to distribute your content. Google's job is mainly around compiling your content into HTML. And so the server that I'm running is only for development. I mean, it's Golang, and so you can risk running that server in production and you'll still do fine. Uh, but people tend to use Nginx because Nginx has this way of saving static files and you don't want to run your own server. So at this point, Google has basically handed over to, to the HTML. That is not entirely true because it, it has to do the live reloading when I edit content. But this stuff you're seeing over here, if it were a real website or if, if it were a deployed website, it would be entirely HTML onwards. There is a little to know. You don't have to have to have JavaScript in there anywhere for it to work. But it's basically a normal website that you can build with, with Google. The advantage of Google really is in if, you build, if, if you have a lot of content and you want to, quickly compile it. That's why the key thing we talk about when we talk about Google is that it has fast compilation. It makes it easy for you to move from whatever you're using right now to Google. If you have a small site, you might as well use it or whatever. But the design, the, <laughs> the design, the design has nothing to do with Google. It's just you and your CSS, how, how much, you, how, how well you know CSS will, will show over here has nothing to do with Google. So basically, uh, that's it. Um, any more questions? Super specific question. Um, restructured text and Hugo. <coughs> how how much is supported? So it's not supported by the official Google too. It is an external. Uh, so I, I I can't tell how much uh, the support is going to continue. Google prefers uh, Markdown. And I'm not sure there has not been any discussion about making more formats the, the default or allowing it to. It's, 
the tool itself, if you if you run it, you'd see it has a lot of way too many options. It's highly configurable. Uh, I'm not sure they are, they're going to complicate it. Uh, you see all the options you get. It's it's extremely many. With support for, I think I touched on let's say 10 to 15 percent of all the stuff that Google can do. Uh, but if you install it to yourself, you you can you can go through it. The website also has a lot of information, very useful information for to pair yourself. So. Yeah. 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 What? Can you bring dynamic data? Like, can you take data from your tentpole or some smaller, you know, API and push it into you or something? Yes, but that's 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 all on you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I said, uh, if you want to build uh, a dynamic website, a website that looks this way today because of data, looks another way tomorrow because the data changed or something like right. that. Can you get the data to build your static site from some kind of API instead of the markdown of this? If you're going to do that, it has to happen at compile time. When you're compiling the public folder, that's when it's supposed to happen, which means you have to build your own. You have to build something to the tool chain, the build tool chain. But what is, what is supported is uh, basically YAML in the data, data folder. If you have any data that you want to use to, for example, uh, we have a lot of employees and you can click on every employee and see their details. You put every single employee's data in the data folder as, as YAML, and then uh, you can use the templating stuff to, to insert the, the information. But as the site is out, if you want to want to get some data from somewhere in some format JSON, XML, I don't know, and put it as part of the page, that is entirely on you. Like I said, Google doesn't leave your computer onto onto the server. No, it doesn't escape. It sure. just so stays you can there. Use, like, like we use Contentful with Gatsby, and then every time the data changes in Contentful, the Gatsby site rebuilds, and you have a new static site. You can then you can. I was just wondering if you can push data into Hugo except by pulling it from this. That's 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 exactly what I'm saying. That if you if you want that option of coming from Contentful to Hugo, then you have to build it. There's actually a plugin. Uh, I don't know if it's safe to say it here. But it's a plugin for moving your, your content from Contentful <laughs> to Google. So. Actually, the plugin pulls the data from Contentful to populate your website. It's not migrating or running away. From no, no, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That it's not. It's not a, but if you have, if you want if you want anything of that sort, then it's it's the plugin that you have to use. But Google itself doesn't uh, deal a lot with dynamic data. It's just static. If you if you go to the website, it's explained pretty clearly that static means it doesn't change. So, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, if you have if you have anything that's changing. Yes, but but uh, uh, smashing magazine setup is not a pretty normal setup. It's not uh, what anybody who is setting up to use Google would, would do. So you, uh, that is to say, that is to say they have they have an extremely uh, they, they, their needs are very different, and so they have to tweak the stuff in ways that makes it work. I mean, they have to work hand in hand with uh, Netlify for that for the stuff to work. It's not and most of the things that makes uh, smashing magazine work had to be published by. Netlify. It's, it's, it wasn't there. It, was, it, it hasn't made it into Google yet. But it's Netlify trying to put some pieces between Google and what Smashing Magazine wants to do, just so it works. So it's not like Google doing that stuff, but there is something in between. If you want to put that stuff in between, of course, you have that option. But Google remains what it is. And then how you, how you get to your final website, you can, there's some flexibility and you can control it. Definitely. All right. Okay, thanks, you.